Good morning, Rochester ALC, and welcome to this week's episode of C103 News. I'm Alex. And I'm Anthony. Hey, Alex, are you into gaming? Uh, I hop onto my Xbox once in a while, but I don't play daily, so how about you? No, I don't play too much, but I know a bunch of students here at RALC do. You ever wonder how video games affect us? Well, let's check out this week's uh, segment and find out. Video games, they're an important part of our generation, but do we really understand how they affect us? We aim to find out the positives and negatives of gaming, and which outweighs the other. Straight to you from fellow gamers of AOC. Hi there, today we're here with Skylar to get his input on PC gaming. So Skylar, what do you spend the most time doing on your computer? I play video games for... Uh, how long? Uh, about maybe seven to ten hours a day. Do you have a favorite genre of video games? Uh, MMOs and MMORPGs. So the MMO would be like Smite or League of Legends, if anyone's heard of them, or Dota 2. And uh, MMORPGs would be like World of Warcraft and single player, but you can also play with multiple people. Okay. Um, are you a competitive gamer? Yes. Yes, I am. Do you see any outside benefits from gaming? Uh, you would get hand-eye coordination, strategy, awareness, and that's all I can think of right now. Okay. Those are very good skills. Thank you for your time. Yep, no problem. Hi, I'm Alex. I'm here with Daniel to talk about some mobile gaming. What, uh, what games do you play on your phone? I usually play, uh, what game was it called? Dragon City, Clash of Clans, or Boom Beach. Ooh, some fun games. Pretty good. Uh, how long is a normal session? Uh, couple hours. Usually when I'm at school, when I'm bored, I just hop on that and play it. Alright, I have to agree with you on that one. Uh, what are some benefits for gaming on your phone? Benefits. I don't really... To the next level, getting to the next level. That's a benefit. Alright, um, do you think mobile gaming is addicting? Very. Very addicting? Very addicting. Well, you've heard it here. Today, we're here with Jacob, and we're going to get his input on console gaming. So Jacob, how often do you play games a day? Usually every day, at least three hours. Oh, uh, do you have any specific games or series that you like? I prefer open world games or anything that isn't based online, except for Destiny, it's based online, but yeah. Okay, um, do you think you can gain any life applicable skills in gaming? Well, most games, are kind of like virtual reality kind of thing. So like you can gain problem solving skills from games and they can help with hand-eye coordination. Okay. Um, what downsides do you see in gaming, if any? They take up time. <laughs> Here's some facts relating to video gaming. First off, vi some video games like brain teasers, if you play them for just two hours a week, can actually slow the rate of decay in your brain as you age. Action games like Call of Duty or Battlefield can help improve your eyesight by giving you better contrast detection, which is a very good skill for night driving. It can also be a pain reliever for if you've had damage from burns or other wounds by keeping your brain occupied and distracting it. It will also, some games will give you improved problem solving or 3D spatial thinking, and but also some games actually most games, can induce confusion between reality and fantasy, and also to make you develop attention problems if you do them too much. It can also damage front your nerves in your neck or other places from compression based on how your posture is while playing. Thank you for your time. Now that you've heard sides from console, PC, and mobile gaming, we hope you understand the positives and negatives of gaming. It really seems to amaze me how much video games can impact our lives. Well, me personally, I don't really have time for these games. I've been pretty focused on getting ready for graduation. I can guarantee you, you aren't the only one. Graduation is coming up faster than I expected. Let's check out what a few of our fellow seniors have to say about it. Hey guys, graduation is coming up and it's time to say goodbye to all of our seniors. Let's hear what they have to say. 
All right, so today I'm here with Victor, Alex, Libby, and Nick, and there's some seniors. And what are your plans after graduating? Alex, why don't you start? My plans after graduating are going to RCTC and hopefully getting my general degree and then moving on to Winona. All right. What he said. Uh, I'm going to go to University of Northern Iowa in Cedar Falls. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to get a degree in yet. All right. After high school, I plan to go to RCTC like Alex, get my generals done, then go to a college I haven't decided on yet for sound technology. All right. And what are you guys going to miss about ALC? What I'm going to miss about ALC is the environment. It's small. And I know that when I go to RCTC, there's going to be a lot of kids, so i got to get used to that again. But I know that I'll get through it. All right. Um, there's going to be, like, a lot of new, like, professors and I know there's like a website where you have to like rate them and stuff, but what I'm gonna miss is like all the teachers, like knowing them and support system, but I know I'll get a great new one there at UNI. Uh, I'm gonna miss my friends. Yeah, I got some. Uh, <laughs> and I'm gonna miss the teachers. Okay. I'm, gonna miss the, yeah, I'm gonna miss the very personal attitude in the school. All right, so thank you. Good luck on life. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm here with a couple more seniors. I'm here with Alex, Philip, Anthony, and Kevin. What are your plans after graduating, guys? Me, personally, I'm going to take a few years off school and just get a good job, save up some money, and then definitely go back to school and uh, continue my education. Um, my plan after high school is uh, to get a job so I can save some money and uh, attend college just so I can pay it off myself and go to the military after high school that's my goal and my plan is just also to work save up some money and then maybe think about going back to school and mine's the same as for all three save up some money and go back to school for auto mechanics all right and what is your favorite memory about ALC mine would be the dodgeball game it's pretty intense kind of rigged it. I still got kicked out but it's all right uh, my favorite memory of the ALC would be like when the whole school gets together and we all have like a big celebration, end of the quarter, end of semester. Uh, it's all fun to see everyone interacting and uh, having fun. My favorite memory is making new friends along the way during the school year. My favorite memory at uh, RLC is uh, her. All right, so thank you guys and good luck. Hey guys, I'm here with a couple more seniors. Um, I have Natalie, Kelsey, and Alana. Um, I'm going to ask them a couple more questions. So, um, how did you decide to come to ALC? Um, I came to ALC just because I didn't like Mayo. Um, kind of the same reason she said. I came here straight in ninth grade. I didn't go to any mainstream school. I went from um, JA straight to here. I just wanted like a fresh start and just meet new people. And I also came here because I didn't like mail. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what are you guys most looking forward to after graduating? Being done with high school. Yeah, like, I'm excited to be done, but I'm, like, nervous and scared at the same time. So I don't really know what I'm looking forward to. I guess, like, just she said, like, just being done with high school and just moving on to something else. Um, I'm looking forward to moving to the cities. Sounds good. Thanks, ladies. Be sure to tune in these next few weeks for these senior segments. Speaking of us graduating seniors, we're so lucky that we don't have to go to summer school. Well, honestly, I hate to say it, but I kind of wish I could go because there are some pretty cool programs for summer school. Yeah, I've heard about them, but I'm not really sure if I'm really interested. If you are interested in going, one of our crews did a segment on it. Let's check it out. It's that time of year again. If you don't think you need summer school, listen up, because you probably do. C103 News. I'm here with Crystal, talking about summer school. So, Mr. Kaji, what kind of classes are you teaching this summer? I'll be teaching a biology class where I teach kids how to take care of aquariums and take care of the different animals that you see in the school, and hopefully get each kid to kind of start their own aquarium and learn how to take care of it. 
What advice would you give to kids who have never been to summer school? Step one, do summer school. Step two, it's laid back from everyone I've talked to. I've never, I've never done summer school at the school before, um, but it seems like it's pretty laid back. The whole point of it is to get people caught up on credits. So get your tushy in here, get you some credits. Get you some credits. Hi, uh, we are here with Mr. Zebart to ask him a few questions about summer school. Um, so what is different this summer? Well, a couple things are different. One is summer school for ALC predominantly in the past has only been like credit recovery. You come to school, you do it on the computer, you do credit recovery. So this year what we're trying to do is give kids more options and give them the opportunity to earn credit in different ways other than just credit recovery. So we're offering several different things like uh, Thursdays on first, the garden, a compost crew, we're having art class, some, a music class, some science classes, a reading class for kids to take, so that it's not just coming to school, doing credit recovery on the computer. Okay, so what is the deadline for sign up? The deadline for signing up is the sooner the better. There really is no deadline at the ALC until the end, until actually summer school starts. But we would like to have an idea how many kids are going to be in summer school as fast as possible. Thanks. Hi, I'm here with Marissa and we're going to talk about summer school. So are you excited about summer school? Not really, but you got to do what you got to do. Um, what advice can you tell the students for going to summer school? Um, if you're going to sign up for it, then you should show up and like not waste people's time and know what classes you need. All right. yeah. Well, thank you. thank you. If you think you need extra credit to make up, don't forget to sign up for summer school. Wow, some of those do actually sound pretty fun. Yeah, they do. Have you ever checked out the woods class? That's a really fun class to take. Oh, I've always wanted to learn how to build things from wood, but me personally, I never got the chance to. Well, let's make sure other students don't get stuck in the same situation you are in. So, let's check out our next segment and find out about Woods. Do you need some trees? Do you need some wood? Well our students at RALC who are in the wood shop class off campus are actually selling their homemade benches, birdhouses, and even candle holders. Over at the old Golden Hill building, check out what a few of our students have to say about it. Thank you. I'm here with Austin, and I got a few questions for you. Right, is that okay with you? Yep. And so, word around town is you attended the woodshop class, right? Yes, sir. What kind of things were built in that class? Um, we build bird houses, bird feeders, benches, tables, stools. So, in that class, is can anyone join, or what's what are the requirements? Uh, right now, it's kind of a class that's been offered to a few kids. Uh -huh. It's not really an official class for ALC. Yep. So. And do you enjoy the class, and why is that? I have a lot of fun there because I like working hand-on. I like building stuff, and I just really like construction. Thank you for your time. Yep. So I'm going to ask you a couple questions, all right? Okay. So we're on the street also. Like, you're in Woods. Yeah. So what have you built in Woods? I've built up birdhouses, benches, a cutting board, tables, a lot of stuff. Yeah, um, what goes on after you do them? Um, we have to sand them down, paint them, put a clear coat on them and everything like that so that the weather doesn't get to them. I also heard you guys are having a sale and just had a, had a sale? Yeah, we did. Did they sell a lot? Yeah. Right on, right on. Is there any like requirements to be in the class? Um, pretty much just have passing grades. Don't be failing any of your classes. Um, be caught up on your credits so that you can take it as an elective, stuff like that. Right on. Um, what do you enjoy in the class and why? Um, I kind of just like, I think it's really fun to make your own creations and get to kind of like do whatever you want to what you make. Like all the wood burning that I've done to a lot of the things that I make and you just get to be creative. More like a hands-on thing? Yeah. All right, thanks for your time. Yep. I'm here with Dominic. Word around town is you participated in, in the woodshop class? Yes, I did. And um, what things have you made in that class? I've made a bench and a bar stool. 
that's it? What's what's yeah. the process of making it after you're done? Uh, you gotta sand it down and stain it or paint it, whatever you wanna do. And is there any requirements for the class specifically? Uh, yeah, to be up on credits and passing your classes. And do you like the class? Yeah, I do. And why is that? Because I like working with my hands. All right, thank you. You have a good one. I'm gonna ask you a couple questions, all right? All right. So, word around town that you're also in the woods. Yep. Right on. What have you built in there? Built a bench, built a table, bird houses. What do you do after they're finished? You sand them down and you stain or paint them. You get to pick what paint goes on there? You do. Right on. So what are the requirements in the, in the class? Just build your, what you're told to build and you pass. Not hard. So I also heard that you guys also just had a sale. Yeah. You might be having another one. If it went as well as we think it did, I wasn't there. Um, we will have another sale. I mean, just good. To put more money back and like, buying more wood for projects. Right on. So what do you enjoy of the class and why? I just like working with the wood um, because that's just something I'm good at. Well, thanks for your time. Yeah. So if you're interested in buying our products made by our own peers, be sure to find out when the next sale is. Thanks for watching our segment. Stay tuned. Oh darn, it's such a shame I'm not going to have the opportunity to take that class next year. Maybe this will cheer you up. Your books are on the way, and they're only $25. Well, let's see what Ms. B has to say about it. Good morning, Rochester ALC. I'm here with a really exciting announcement for everybody. The yearbooks are in. Here they are. And they look really good. Here's a little sneak peek for you. Oh, that's all you get, though. If you ordered a yearbook, you will get your yearbook next Friday, May 22nd, during advisory. If you have not ordered a yearbook yet and you want to, bring me $25 and I will put your name on one and you will get yours on Friday, May 22nd as well. Today, I have 27 yearbooks left. That's it. So if you know you want to buy one, the sooner the better. After yearbooks are distributed on May 22nd, whatever's left, this first come, first serve, will sell them till they're gone. So seniors, especially you, if you want to buy a yearbook, make sure you come see me as soon as possible. Thanks. Have a great day. I'm definitely going to cop me one of these yearbooks just because I know I'm in it. Well, it is only $25, so why wouldn't you? True. Well, that's all the time we have here, folks. Thanks for watching our show, and be sure to catch us on the next one. Thanks.